the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today is the Feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And in this mystery, which was made into a very prominent feast by Pope Pius XII in 1950, we are venerating the Heart of Mary in the same way that we, or in a similar way, in which we uh, we adore the Sacred Heart of Jesus. That is to say, we are not looking at a specific organ of our Blessed Lady, but rather we are looking at her love. We are looking at what she loves, just as in the Sacred Heart of Jesus we are we fix our attention on what our blessed Lord loves in his sacred humanity. And so, in the Immaculate Heart, we are uh, seeing the heart of Mary in as much as it represents the whole person of Mary, just as the Sacred Heart represents the whole person of Jesus Christ. So also, the Immaculate Heart represents the whole person of Mary, And symbolically, the Immaculate Heart represents what Mary loves. Taken symbolically, therefore, it is a devotion that is most suited to the modern world. You know the one of the Beatitudes, and perhaps the most famous, is Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God. And that's the greatest of the rewards, for they shall see God. Now, to have a clean heart means to have a heart that is free from disordered attachment. You know that we are material beings. We are created beings. But it is very easy for us to have an excessive attachment to created things. There is a moderate and correct attachment to certain created things. But because of the effects of original sin, we have a tendency to an excessive attachment to created and material things. And when we have an excessive attachment to a created and a material thing, it means that we have an unclean heart, a dirty heart. Whereas a clean heart is one that is completely free of these attachments that is a heart which loves created and material things only to the extent that God wants us to love them and in the manner that God wants us to love them that is a clean heart now we say that the heart of Mary is immaculate that means absolutely clean for you know from doing dishes or washing clothes that something can be called clean but there are degrees and so also in the cleanliness of our heart there are degrees of cleanliness so anyone who is in the state of grace has a clean heart but those who are very mortified like a saintly monk has a much cleaner heart than say an average layperson And the one who has an immaculate heart, one that is absolutely free of any attachment whatsoever, is our Blessed Lady. Because she never had the effects of original sin. She was immaculately conceived. She was never guilty of original sin. And she did not have this tendency to sin. For you know that no matter how much you mortify your own hearts no matter how much you resist temptation. And this is true even of great saints. There remains that tendency, that that thrust of the heart toward a material thing. And that every single day we are beset by temptations to one thing or another because of the effects of original sin. And that would be true even if you achieved a very high degree of sanctity. 
But our Blessed Lady did not have that tendency to sin because she was not guilty of original sin. Hence, her heart is not even drawn by those things. It is immaculate. And so her heart loves God alone. Loves God. And her neighbor in God. That is why our Blessed Lady is the mother of the whole human race and why we go to her with our problems and with our requests, our prayers, because she has a perfect love of neighbor. She has the same or very similar <clears throat> love of God that the Sacred Heart has and, and a very similar love of the human race that the Sacred Heart has. Of course, the Sacred Heart of Jesus his sacred humanity being attached to the second person of the Blessed Trinity has an infinitely greater love of God than she does. And he has an infinitely greater love of the human race than she because no matter what we say about Our Lady, she is a creature. And no matter what we say of grace that is in Our Lady's soul, it does not come close to what we call the grace of union, which is, is, it is, which is what makes our blessed Lord in his sacred humanity divine. That is a whole other thing. But nevertheless, the edifice of our blessed lady is the perfect copy, we may say, of our blessed Lord. If there is a perfect copy possible in a human person of our Lord Jesus Christ, it is our Blessed Lady, it is the Immaculate Heart of Mary. She has achieved, by the grace of God, the greatest imitation of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is what we celebrate particularly today. We are celebrating today the spiritual life of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We are celebrating her interior graces. And this coronation of grace that is in the Blessed Virgin Mary we call the Immaculate Heart of Mary. That is the, the whole gist of this feast the spiritual interior life of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And it is very opportune that Pope Pius XII should present to the modern world this feast because the modern world is so affected by attachment to material things that we could even say that it is defined by attachment. The modern world is defined by dirtiness of heart. Look at the love of wealth. The love of wealth that has made human beings absolutely senseless. They have lost their common sense. So that today things are possible that would never have been possible even 50 years ago because people have lost their common sense. For example, the recognition of unnatural marriages. 50 years ago, that would have been outrageous. But because people are attached to their money and their things, their distractions, they don't even care anymore. They have lost their common sense. Or the love of impurity, shall we even mention that? If somebody came here from a, an alien planet and saw the way people lived, they would say that this, the inhabitants of this planet are obsessed with impurity. the great characteristic of the modern world 
And again, this has made the modern world senseless, almost like animals. So they don't care what happens to their government. They don't care about anything as long as there is food in the refrigerator and, and liquor and sports and money. Nothing else matters. And this modern age is characterized by a contempt for God. Contempt for His authority. This modern age has no fear of God and His punishments. And so this, this age that we live in, it has a dirty, dirty heart. It's dirty. And the church holds out to this age, the immaculate heart of Mary, the, the heart that loves God. The heart that loves God. But when we come to the end of our lives, we will be judged on what we have loved. That will be the judgment. What did you love? And if you replace the love of material things or impure things for the love of God, if you yanked God off the throne of your heart and placed in it a God of material things or a God of impurity, then you will be condemned to hell because of what you have loved. But if you have loved God, you can look forward to eternal life. But even there, you will be judged on how much you loved God. Did you respond to all of the graces that God gave you? Did you love Him with your whole heart and with your whole soul and with your whole mind and with your whole strength? Did you profess His faith when necessary did you make all of the sacrifices that he demanded of you did you spend your lifetime in the love of God these will be the questions that God will have for you for the purpose of human life is the love of God and that's why we raise to the altar martyrs and other saints because they have done with their lives what man ought to do with his life. And that is to love God above all things, even to the cost of his life. And in that sense, they have done nothing extraordinary. What is extraordinary in the saint is that he has overcome himself. St. Dominic said, the greatest victory is the victory over yourself. And that means the victory over the inclinations of sin in your heart. Where this resolve to love God above all things conquers all of the movements and tendencies of your lower nature. That is the greatest victory of man. It comes by the grace of God. And that is what is remarkable in the saint, is that victory. But that a man love God above all things is not a remarkable thing, for that is what he is made to do. Any more than you would say that it is a remarkable thing that when you turn the key in your, in your car, the motor starts and you drive away. Why? Because your car was made to do that. The Immaculate Heart to us is especially delightful because, first of all, it is the heart of a woman. And the heart of a woman has special tenderness and sweetness. God in His goodness so wants human beings to come to Him that He was not content to bear His own heart and to become man himself and to bear his own heart to the human race, but also 
wanted the human race to have a mother of grace a supernatural mother and wanted the human race to have the heart of his mother the heart of a woman to go to because everyone knows that the heart of a woman is more tender and more sweet than the heart of a man and has more compassion and more attention to the needs of her children than a man does and knowing that and also we have to say having created that in women our blessed Lord gives us his mother on the cross behold thy mother and so where we might be somewhat fearful of the majesty of God even in the sacred heart how could we be fearful of going back to our mother and so many sinners have found their way back to God by going to the Immaculate Heart of Mary to going to the Blessed Virgin Mary and because it is the heart of our mother we have a special consolation in the Blessed Virgin Mary St. Bernadette when she saw the Blessed Virgin Mary went into ecstasy so much so that when a candle was applied to her hand she did not feel it and this was done by a doctor who was an atheist went to her with a candle and burned her hand while she was looking at the Blessed Virgin Mary she went into an ecstasy and even though afterwards when she came out there was the you could see the effect of the burn on her hand nevertheless during that she did not feel anything and for the rest of her life her sole thought being our blessed lady again now there is someone who saw our lady it is a certitude there is no reason to doubt it she saw the blessed virgin mary and this vision of our blessed lady brought her into ecstasy she was in another world she would not respond even to, to burning because she had her eyes and her mind fixed on our blessed lady imagine the glory and the beauty of the immaculate heart of Mary so we give today the immaculate heart first our veneration of honor because it is the heart molded by God for himself and secondly we give it the veneration of imitation which is the more difficult which is to, de to detest sin and to love God without measure and when we say most sacred heart of Jesus make my heart like unto thine we are really saying make my heart like the heart of your mother in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost Amen